Hello, and welcome to your OpenSUSE desktop. In this video, I'll be giving you a brief look around the interface to help you get familiar with your new KDE environment. The first thing you will notice when you boot into OpenSUSE is this greeter panel. Take some time and have a look at some of the links provided here, as there are some really useful tools and information. Down here at the bottom of the screen, you will notice the default panel, which has links to your application launcher, activities, workspace switcher, as well as shortcuts to the file manager and the internet browser. Over here on the right hand side, you will find links to your clipboard and volume controls. Each one of these items on the panel is called a widget and can be changed depending on your own custom needs. This button here on the far right will give you access to the panel's toolbox. Clicking this will allow you to tweak the panel's settings and add or remove widgets. You can easily move the panel to different edges or adjust the size of it to better suit your monitor or personal preference. By clicking the Add Widgets button, you're given a list of all available widgets and can easily add one by double clicking. While you still have the panel's toolbox active, you can also move these widgets around or remove them completely. The next thing to point out is that widgets can also be added to the desktop. In fact, this box with the four icons is called a folder view widget and can be moved around and customized to your own liking. Widgets being displayed on the desktop will give you a handle when you move your mouse over them, along with some additional controls. By clicking the wrench icon, you can access the widget's settings. Let's change the location from default desktop folder to the home folder, and then click apply, and you'll see the widget update. You now have an easy and convenient way of accessing the files and folders within your home directory. Clicking the small arrow which appears over the folders will allow you to peek at the files inside, and copying and pasting is as easy as dragging and dropping the file from one folder to another. To select more than one file, simply click the plus icon to add it to your selection like this. So this is an incredibly useful widget, but let's check out a few more. You'll notice in the top right corner a button to access the desktop's toolbox. By choosing the Add Widget option here, you'll be given the same list of widgets as before, only this time, double-clicking it will add the widget to your desktop. I'll bring out a clock widget and also a weather widget. Again, by clicking the wrench, you can access the widget's settings dialog. Let's change the city to Edmonton, Alberta, and change it from Fahrenheit to Celsius, and hit Apply. Now that you have your desktop looking exactly the way you like it, it's a good idea to lock the widgets. By doing this, you're no longer given the handles on the desktop widgets, and the button to access the panels toolbox goes away. And if you need to make more modifications, it's really easy to just unlock them again. Now that we've had a look at the Plasma desktop, Let's take a moment to check out the basic features of the file manager, Dolphin. Here you can see the folders within your home directory, and you can navigate into a folder with a single click. The navigation bar at the top lets you easily see your current position, as well as allowing you to quickly change directories. To select more than one file, you can either press Ctrl while selecting the files, or click the plus button on each file you would like to add to the selection. You can also use the right mouse button to access the context menu. The panel on the left here contains links to your favorite places. You can easily add folders to this panel by simply dragging and dropping them into place. Let's quickly change the icon for the videos folder to something a bit more obvious. If you need to copy files from one directory to another, a handy feature in Dolphin is the split button here in the toolbar. By pressing it, you can view two separate directories simultaneously and easily transfer files between them. 
And when you're finished, you can just as easily close either side and go back to a single directory layout. Let's take a quick look at some of the basic features of the KDE Window Manager. You may find it convenient to arrange multiple directories as tabs. To do this, you can simply right-click the title bar and choose the option Attach as Tab 2. This feature isn't just limited to the file manager either. Any window can be added as a tab in this way. Sometimes you may want a window to always stay on top of the stack. And this is easily achieved by right-clicking the title bar, selecting More Actions, and then check the Keep Above Others box. Now you will notice that no matter which window has focus, the original keeps itself above all the others. If this is an option that you use regularly, it may be a good idea to have a permanent button for it on the title bar. These buttons can be added and removed by opening the Window Manager Settings and selecting Window Decorations from the left. Here you will find options for changing the overall look of the windows and the option to configure buttons. Let's add the Keep Above Others option as a button to the title bar by checking the Use Custom Title Bar Button Positions box and then dragging the appropriate option into the desired position. You will now see the button on the title bar and it can be easily toggled with a single click. Depending on your preferred method of navigation, you may want to change some of the default settings to suit your personal preferences. Under Control, choose Dolphin Preferences and then Navigation from the left. Here you will find the option to change the single click scheme to a double click one, as well as the option to both open archives as a folder and open folders during a drag operation. Let's check the double click option as well as the drag operations option and see how they work. You will now notice that you need to double click to open folders and when you drag an item over a folder, after a second it will open. Another handy feature worth pointing out is the ability to add and remove services from the context menu. Open the Dolphin Preferences dialog once again and choose Services from the left. Here you are given a list of all the currently available services from which you can enable or disable. Let's add the Delete option and click Apply. You will now see the Delete service available to you within the context menu. This can really help your productivity, and with countless more services available as downloads, the options are endlessly growing. Let's quickly take a look at manipulating image files. After opening an image file, you have many basic options for editing it to your liking. To access a picture focus view, press the full screen button and everything but the content will disappear. Here at the top edge of the screen, you will still have some basic functions for rotating and adding additional pictures to the screen. If you need to do some more advanced image manipulation, you can quickly open the picture in GIMP, where you will have access to a wide range of advanced filters, layers, and drawing tools. And when you're done editing, you can easily export your image to a number of online services. Thanks for checking out the video, and enjoy your new OpenSUSE desktop. By default, OpenSUSE 12.3 comes with version 3.6 of the LibreOffice suite. This is a very reliable version of the Office production toolset and should be perfect for most users. However, if you are interested in trying the latest 4.0 version of LibreOffice and all the great new features that it comes with, simply open your internet browser and type the following URL into the address bar, software.opensusa.org. In the search field, type LibreOffice and then choose the appropriate result from the list. Scroll to the bottom of the page and click Show Other Versions. This will reveal a list of alternate downloads for different versions of OpenSUSE. Let's choose the 12.3 option and then click the Show Unstable Packages button. You will get a warning telling you that the packages are from unofficial repositories and therefore may be less stable. Click Continue. 
and you should now see LibreOffice 4.0 available to download. To install it, simply click the button labeled One Click Install and follow the prompt. Thanks for checking out the video and enjoy your new OpenSUSE desktop and version 4.0 of the LibreOffice suite.